Hello. Welcome to the session on the actual report creation. And I hope you've been practicing along with what we've been doing so far. Because if you just watch the videos and you don't practice, you're not going to really learn and, and, and internalize those skills. So uh, now is where you're going to see the beauty of all what we've been doing so far. So I'm going to rename this page to sales reports. And um, I'm going to quickly try to create like the general look. Uh, I would like to put our company logo. So say this company is uh, Pizza Inc. Inc. So if I go to insert and image, I yeah, this is the logo Pizza Inc. logo, and I add it. So this is how you can insert images anyway, and especially very useful for logos. So I'm going to add that and I'm going to make it a lot smaller so that um, logos are actually always small. And I put it at the upper left corner. Then uh, I also want to add one very important thing you will be needing to add a lot to your reports are slicers. They allow you to be able to control the perspective the user can view, you know, can see. So if I want to see sales for all of the branches, I want to see sales for just some particular branches. You know, I want to see sales for all of the days, a particular year. So all those kind of things, it's slicers that make them possible. But just before I go to it, just to let you know that you can also customize this entire uh, report canvas, right? If you click on the empty space here and you, you will always have all of these things here, you will always have these controls that are context aware. When I say context aware, you know, they keep, uh, the options you get, they keep changing depending on what is in, in selection. So right now that I'm just selecting the empty canvas, this is what I get. And there's always this format. So if you go there, you see the things you can change about the look and feel. So if I have a particular background, I would like to. So if you've seen some people's reports where they used some backgrounds and you're like, whoa, this is awesome, you know, how did they do this? You know, it's just to come here and you had, a, had an image as a background. Let me see if I have an image I can use to do a demo for us to see. I, in PowerPoint trainings that I do, I usually do have some, some, some images, PowerPoint training resource. Let me just look for a really nice image. Just going to see something that is going to pop out. Uh, let's use this. Huh? This looks nice. And once I had it, sometimes you might not notice until you come here and you decrease the transparency. And you begin to see the image show. Right? So if I if you like this, then great. This is how you achieve it. I'm not going to use an image. Uh, also, if you have if you've seen people co uh, use a different background, I, I'm not good with colors, right? So, so that's my own weak point. But I've seen people that have trained and you know right there in the classes, their report looks better than mine because they are able to pull off some interesting colors. So maybe they use a background and then they make all those colors pop out. Uh, whenever I try it, I just make the whole thing look horrible. So I, I don't do it unless maybe uh, the user or the client has given me what kind of colors they like. Then great. I know what to click to change the colors. But then again, that this is where they make that happen. And if you want to change, this is recommended. But then if you have what so for whatever reason you want to change the shape of the canvas of the report page, you want it to look like it like a an a, a for maybe now letter right like you know you want it to you know, two tip i don't know what that does but then you see what it has done it looks a bit more like three to four or what okay it looks smaller because now my image is a lot looking bigger so okay i'm going to revert these changes just to let you be aware and then there's custom where you can specify the you know the length and width so if you have your own particular sizes you want maybe you want the height to be like 1000 to 100 so one to you know you want the width to be i don't know maybe 800 you know you can specify and you begin to uh, customize the, the size of the canvas i'm going to change this back to the default because uh, the default is good for most reports okay 
Uh, so back to the filter. So for anything I need to add that is going to be like an analytics or that is going to relate with the data that I'm that I've brought in, then you will add them from visuals. So if you are lucky that the visual that you want to use uh, or the thing you want to do can be done by the visuals that are inbuilt in Power BI, that is great. Uh, and this is the field slicer I'm talking about. But if it's a case where what you want is not here, there's always like an app store, which, you know, if you come to these ellipses and you click on app store, you know, you can be able to browse through a larger collection of very interesting visuals that you might find useful, you know, and better able to portray the analysis you want to carry out. So let me just wait for it to pop up and then I'll close it just so you will see what I'm saying. So you see, there are very interesting ones, you know, if you have seen people use um, if this is a slicer that lets you collapse so i can have like like continent then if you pick like europe the thing expands to all the countries in the continent so maybe a con company in multiple continents it could be like states and regions it could be like product categories and the skus and the products themselves it could be you know managers and the people under them so this hierarchy slicer is something that does that and if you've seen people use logo a slicer so you sell different products and you want it such that you want to use the label of the products like the image of the product as as, as clickable slicers this makes that possible i've seen someone do it for a football analysis and then you use the the club's logo right so you click click, click on this club but not by the name but by the but their logo and then you are able to analyze and this is good for for what for Con for sentiment analysis so if you have things where people are writing comments and you want to just pop out in really big sizes the keywords people keep mentioning so you know you know whether they are good or they are bad or what are the problems that you need to to let management be aware of and then you know again you can just scroll through this to have an idea of what they all do if there's anyone that you like and you just want to see some extra information about how they work if you click on it you will see some additional information about how to use it you know you can read about what it does and uh, that is it huh? so i'm going to close this we're going to focus more on the inbuilt ones because they are powerful in themselves there are about 29 of them and that's a lot okay excel just has like 18 max so and we do a lot with excel so this with just this ones you can do an awesome lot so i'm going to add the slicers right so this is what i call the slicer they are one of those things you want to use you will even had first in if by my own analysis um, um experience they are the ones i had first because that's why where i begin to control the, the user experience so i'm going to say that i wanted to be able to pick a branch now this is very interesting the branch that we are talking about right this branch is available in, in three different files there's branch there's branch in sales data there's branch in branch data there's branch in sales. which of them am i going to use this is where you have to remember how you've done your relationship here. So you pick from the one that can talk to everybody, the one that is like up there in terms of this communication hierarchy. If I pick branch from here, branch from here can talk to this, can talk to this, but unfortunately it cannot talk to branch data here because this cannot talk back here. Right? Similarly, if I pick branch here, it can talk to this, can talk to this. There's no branch here anyway. It can talk to this, but it can't talk back here. So, but if I pick branch here, it can talk to this, can talk to this, right? so i'm going to pick the one that can you know control every other thing so i'm picking branch from from here so that's the thing you just have to always keep that in mind otherwise you will see that sometimes your analysis uh the, the one thing you used to know easily is whenever they're just repeating the same figures that's one very short tell a a, a short telltale sign that you've picked something that cannot control another aspect of your analysis and then you can quickly use this to uh, trace which you should have picked so i'm going to just uh, knock this one off so i've added this branch i'm i'm happy with the way it looks uh, but then you can control what the look you can say maybe you want it as a drop down so the user is able to pick or but i'm going to do, uh, reset it back to list and then i'm going to just resize it so it just has enough size to show what i need to show and then uh, as usual if you go to the format you can always control some things about it maybe you want it to be uh, vertical orientation we're going to do that but not in this one uh, 
maybe I want it to look like this in case